What does satellite internet, Ozoon, and Excel have in common? Well, they've all had leap year bugs. In fact, Excel has been around for so long, it's now part of the spreadsheet standard, but more on that later. In case you forgot, February 29th, 2024 was a leap year. Now, most of the times the issues occur on the leap day itself, but sometimes those bugs take until the end of the year to show up, which is exactly what happened with OneWeb, a Starlink competitor. The satellite broadband service went down just after midnight on December 31st, 2024 for 48 hours. The cause? Well, a spokesperson told the register, we can confirm that the issue was caused by a leap year problem related to day 366 in 2024, which impacted the manual calculation for GPS to UTC offset. I'm honestly quite impressed they admitted that much. Now, we don't know the exact calculation for what they were using. I asked Claude for some buggy GPS to UTC code, and it gave me this using JavaScript. Now, I don't think, or at least I hope that system wasn't using JavaScript for this, but in general, both formulas would have had the same issue of assuming a year was 365 days when last year's was 366. There's actually two categories of leap year bugs as well. Category one leads to errors and category two is more sneaky and it leads to incorrect data, like off by one problems. Your favorite languages aren't immune to these either. In Python, for example, say I was trying to get a date a year from now. If I used this code, it would work properly until today becomes February 29th. Then it's going to attempt to create a February 29th of a common year, so a normal year. And then that doesn't exist. So it ultimately raises an error, which is a category one bug. If we tried the same thing in JavaScript with this code, it will work properly until the day again becomes February 29th. Then it's going to attempt to set the year to 2025, but 2025 doesn't have a 29th of January. So the date object is simply just going to roll forward to the next valid date, which is going to be the 1st of March, 2025. That's a category two bug as it makes the data wrong and doesn't throw an error. So it's quite sneaky and it's scary to think that some of them could be out there that have been uncaught. Another common way for leap year bugs to occur is by incorrectly building in the leap year logic. We all know a leap year occurs every four years, right? That's easy logic. We could do something like this. Well, I hate to break it to you, that's not how it works, and you can thank 1582's Pope Gregory for the mess of the logic right here. A leap year actually occurs on every year that is exactly divisible by four, so the same logic we just had, except for years that are divisible by 100, so the centurial years, like the 2000s for example, except 2000 was a leap year because centurial years are leap years if they're exactly divisible by 400 as if the year 2000 needed another date bug. So the calculation is not so straightforward and even the operation in there matters too. So you can see how that can easily lead to errors. In fact, let's put the year 1900 through our new function. Not a leap year, but Excel says it can be though. So why? Well, this story is hilarious to me and we have to travel back 41 years before most of you were probably born. And that's to a piece of software called Lotus123. Lists and tables of data can be created and managed. Ah, who needs it? With a memory like mine, hey, I don't need any software to tell me what's going on. This was the spreadsheet program for the IBM PC. It incorrectly had 1900 as a leap year, and when Microsoft wanted to compete with it and have compatibility, they copied it bug for bug. To maintain this backwards compatibility though, the bugs still exist to this day, even having its own dedicated page on the Microsoft documentation. And it's now a bug enshrined in the standards as well, because you can't really pick a date to go ahead and fix this if you wanna maintain that backwards compatibility. Talking of Microsoft as well, remember Zune? Yeah, me neither. But if you're one of the 10 people that used one and you were trying to listen to your favorite Flowrider song on the December 31st, 2008, you'd have been disappointed as it froze. Microsoft stated the problem was caused by the internal clock driver not being able to handle the leap year, but it automatically fixed itself 24 hours later. But in the meantime, you could do an intermediate fix, which was to drain the battery, then recharge it only after noon UTC on January 1st, 2009, saving yourself about 12 hours to listen to your favorite song. As you can see, no company is immune from a leap year bug, but don't worry, our next leap year is in 2028, so set your reminder to fix that bug on February 28th, 2028. If you want to see some more notable entries from this year, I found a blog by Matt here detailing them and that impact, like the street lighting in Paris wrongly turning off at midnight at the start of February 29th, or go ahead and check out the Wikipedia page for the most famous examples. If you know any examples of your own, let me know in the comments down below, and if you made it this far, like and subscribe, and as always, see you in the next one.